All right, folks, I have here a little treasure. I know it seems rusty, it seems doesn't have potential, but it's so important for today's project because if you probably follow me on Instagram, you already know that I really love to put things on top of the car, on the rooftop, because I love to recycle things. And first of all, I have to bring them to the shop to recycle them. So I don't have a pickup or a truck. I have to load them on top of the roof of the car. And for me, it's crucial to have a roof rack very very sturdy that can hold my weight if i want to clean up on the car or any kind of object so i already know where to start i have this that is a stainless steel uh, table base was a, um, a glass base for a, a glass table but it's very very sturdy it's made with a very thick material and i really and i really love that i that they have already these 90 degree corners angles because are very difficult to make even if we make together a couple of years ago a bending tube machine this is pretty tricky to make such a small 90 degree angles so i want to recycle this base cut it dismount it and use it to make this roof rack so let's start After scanning with my iPhone, my personal car, I have all the dimensions so that I can project and understand all the dimensions of all the other components of my roof rack project. So let's start, take away and dismount the, the structure of the table because we need these 90 degrees corners, but of course we also need longer tubes to create structure itself. So I bought these tubes that are a little bit wider than the, the table structure so that I can make like a, a press fit together. And now I have to cut 16 parts all with the same length. So you, you can see I mount some pliers here on the side on the left and this is a stopper so that I can cut all the tubes with the perfect dimension and they look exactly all the same. This is so professional. Now I have to round up the corners of these tubes because I want to weld them together and it's very important to choose the right bit to cut it. In this case I choose 25 millimeters like the tubes I show you here and now I need to find a way to hold it sturdy and I will say that the drill, drill, drill press is crucial for this because it doesn't have to move. I also bolted a vise here on the, on the base and this will work and I just have to need a lot of oil. This will help to cool down the bit and also to lubricate the cut. And But probably here I'm making a huge mistake. The RPMs of the drill are too high and probably we are exaggerating too much force or heat on the cutting parts of the thing. So after all it cuts, this is to be thrown away. So, lucky for us, I have these that are very Se prima hard stavamo lavorando in verticale con il trappola colonna, adesso cambiamo completamente ah, se lavoriamo in orizzontale. In infatti, ho montato nel mio tornio che ha un motore molto più potente. Questa punta so, che ha una qualità decisamente migliore. I add a lot of oil this time. The oil will lubricate the cut, so it helps to bring away all the chips, but also cools down the cutting part of the bit, so the life of it will be longer. So, I repeat this. This procedure 16 times, not 32 times, with all the tubes, and I ended up to have all the parts I need much easier and much more professionally. Welds will be made in this way. So I'm just shaping the parts so that they will fit much better. Now I can remove the big bolt that was holding the tube in place. I tightened this so hard, doesn't move, and now I can remove it and see the cut result. So I ended up in one and a half hour to cut. 16 of these tubes on both sides and you can see they look amazing yeah this this i choose the one that was so horrible made but the other ones fit perfectly you can see how precise is the fit and this helps me also to weld better the parts i can cut also the metal structure because i really need the 90 degree corners of this structure and after laying them on the table, these are the eight components I really need for this project. I cut them so long because I hope I can fit them together like a precise fit. You can see that eight corners are more than enough. And now I have to lay everything on this positioning table to weld them. And also these very long tubes have to have the same treatment. So I need to cut away the end of this. And this is also so long. I hate this part of the project. But this is so important. Let me explain you the reason why. I live in Italy and here in Italy the police is so 
so serious about roof racks. They really want to have like, they want to see a documentation. They want to see if it's like something you, you have bought in the shop. You cannot place homemade roof rack on top of the car. Otherwise they will find you a ticket for this. So I want to make my roof rack look something professional that I bought in the shop. So it's very important also here to have this fixer table to align properly all the parts and have always the same distance while I weld the parts together. So even if the police stop me, they watch at the roof rock and it seems something that I bought and it doesn't seem something I just homemade. So that's the reason why I'm putting so much effort and patience and care keeping the, all the details perfect. You can see that, for example, here, the 90 degree corner fits precisely inside the bigger tube, and I can align the top part of the roof rack with the under part, and these tubes are like distance part, and I can use magnets to keep them perfectly vertical in both directions, so <laughs> they are perfectly straight. I can weld them in place and repeat this procedure all around the roof rack are 16 times, no, 36, 32 times. This also took so much time. Now I really understand why roof rack like this one are so expensive, because it takes a lot of time to build it. So the tedious part now is not fitting the parts that are 90 degrees, but, but fabricating it. this that has much weirder shape. This is a much longer corner, it's not 90 degrees. And this could be tricky to be made, but let me show you how I approach this problem. Let's start, first of all, taking the 90 degree corner of the table, of course, and place on the table a very sturdy vise, place the tube inside, and with my angle grinder, I'm placing some cuts. This isn't necessary to have them perfectly spaced or perfectly with the same depth. It's important to have the same number of cuts on both tubes. You can see that after applying some force, I will change the dimension and the angle of this tube. So we start from a 90 degree corner to a 60 corner, so a 60 degree corner, and I can weld back up together all the cuts I made with the angle grinder. I repeat this procedure two times with two tubes, and if you make the same number of cuts on both tubes, you will end up to have exactly the same corner. You can see that these are like twins, they are exactly the same, we have the same angle, and I can then insert these inside. The tube. I don't know why this is much trickier. Even if I remove rust, this doesn't fit inside and the solution was just to weld a little corner here so that I can hammer it inside. And once this is perfectly installed and perfectly aligned also in this direction, I can cut away the corner I'm using to hammer the parts together. So I love to work with metal because it's something so, uh, so easy to modify in a very easy solution. So you can see that the ended up result is exactly the same as the 3D file of Fusion 360. And it came out great. It's also pretty lightweight, considering that it's all, it's all made with metal. It's only 10 or 12 kilos, so it isn't pretty heavy at all. And the most difficult part is made. So we have this curvature that is welded on top of this one. And it looks nice, has a nice design. Now our two things are missing. You can clearly see that here, there's a tube that is missing. And I, I was planning to mount two huge ball bearings on these parts, I have these ball bearings, and these can be very useful to, to be mounted here and place like a big roller on top so that they can slide very, very heavy components on top of the car without problems. And you can also clearly see that also in the front part of the project, there is something that looks like a roller, but that's not a roller. It cannot roll because there is a stop on the top. It's for hide and LED bar. Unfortunately, where the, the city where I live, that is Turin here in Italy, uh, has a very bad reputation in this side of the city. There are so many thieves that steal um, accessories for cars. So I want to mount this LED strip light and it's one meter long. So so it's, it's almost the same dimension of the, the bard, the, the roof rack, so it looks amazing. But I have to hide it from thieves. Uh, the idea is to mount it inside a very big tube, which is also the same dimension of the roller tube. So I think it's gonna be hided correctly. So I can mount this inside and slide it in and later cut 
a, a slot here so that the, the light can go out. I know probably you are thinking, rule of the there is a heat sink that is made for cool down the LEDs. And if you install it inside a metal tube, there is no airflow and the LED will overheat. That's not true because unfortunately this is a, a very Chinese LED bar and Chinese LEDs aren't connected properly to the heat sink at all because the LEDs aren't so powerful that really need, need a heat sink. The heat sink is only for us to think that it is a very powerful LED but isn't properly connected. Or maybe they made this structure with a heat sink so that you can upgrade them, you can upgrade the LEDs and put much more powerful ones. But these are like one, one watt each, each and doesn't heat uh, the structure so much that we don't need um, so much airflow. So let's, let's weld everything together. It's very important to keep the ball bearing, first of all, very sturdy. And in this case, I want to have a pressure fit between the parts. I choose this tube, apply some lubricant, and I can use the force of my vise to push the parts together. Remember, while you are using ball bearings, never use a hammer. This will ruin the balls or the bearing itself. And we ruin also the flow of the bearings. So use a vise or maybe use an hydraulic press. And in this case, I can press everything inside this six centimeters wide tube that has the same dimension of the ball bearing outside diameter. So it's a bit tricky. I don't have a long press so long that I can push the parts together. But let's start, first of all, cutting the right dimension. I follow the project. This is 90 centimeters long tube, so I can cut it precisely at 90 centimeters. And now I can place the ball bearings. I cut some slots here so that I release a little bit of pressure that was holding on the side of the diameter outside the diameter of the ball bearings and after closing back everything together with my welds this is the end result remember don't overheat also the ball bearings there is a rubber gasket all around that keeps away the dust so we don't want to ruin this part and i can then weld everything back on the full frog structure and this is my plan. Mount this tube with the LED bar in front. You can see that this doesn't work as a roller, but the police and the thief will think that this is a roller structure and nothing will think, nobody will think there's an LED bar placed here on top of the car. So I want to hide everything inside the roof rack and let's start to take measurements so that I know for sure the distance and the length of the tube I need to cut to hide this LED bar inside of it. So the first thing is also to reduce a little bit the heat sink of the LED bar because this doesn't fit. I have to cut away one millimeter of heat sink and now you can see that is a perfect fit between, between the tube parts. It's almost a pressure fit as well but probably it's also a good idea to weld the structure so it doesn't move. I need to cut a slot so that the light from the LED bar can go outside. Uh, the best solution to have a perfectly straight line on a tube is to use a 90 degree corner like this one. This works perfectly as a, as a ruler to have a very, very precise line. I need now to cut away the parts I just mark with a marker. And in this case, I can remove the, the window so that the light can go outside. Unfortunately, once they make this tube inside the fabric in the industry, this holds so much tension because remember this start from a flat sheet of metal, they bend it and once you cut away a window, you uh, re release this pressure and there's a little bit of deformation. I can use this drill bit to make some caps on the side of the LED bar tube and pressure fit it and also put a one single spot of weld so it doesn't move. I can weld also this LED bar tube here on the front part Part of my roof rack and we are almost ready for sure and this can spin so if, when I don't drive the car I place it facing down and if I drive the car I place it facing forward so now I have to paint everything with black paint this is probably made for metal to stay in the rain in the outdoor so I think this will hold up 
Now let's talk about the sides of the roof rack. You can see that I place all these short tubes all around the sides of it. These are so helpful for me to tight very easily objects on top of, of top of the roof rack. But there's also a structural reason about there's this place over here. Let's think about commercially made roof racks. You can see that these are made in a very very thin material. It's just a metal sheet, just bend it with the right shape. You can see all these diagonal shapes structure. This is for helping the structure keep keep it straight and stable. Even if, even if we put a lot of weight on top of the structure, this will not fold on itself. Let's think about the project we made last week. This was the structure. You can see the same beam corners connected, and this helps to keep the structure very, very straight, even if I move the press here on the bottom. So you can understand in a roof rack, this make the same job. So keep the structure very, very straight, even if it's a lightweight structure, can hold a lot of weight on top of the roof rack. So this is more than necessary. It's not for a practical reason for tightening objects, but also to keep the structure very, very straight. So remember this, once you start your own project, put some beams on the side, or diagonally or vertically, depends on you, but this works for me and this, that's more than enough. It came nice. Well, it's so sturdy, <laughs> the machine is moving and doesn't go anyway. Um, just thinking about the project, I use a software, an app on the iPhone, which is called uh, Scanningers, and uh, let you let you take, just scan all the things you want with the LiDAR sensor, and you just import the files into your 3D uh, software. So that's so easy for designing and prototyping things, and it was so easy to design and space properly all the bars that make this roof rack. I know it isn't pretty, but it's so sturdy. You can see that all the car is moving and doesn't shake the, the, the roof rack at all. I want to improve it. I want to make some circles on the top so that I can mount them very quickly and I can make like a camping tent directly here on top because the dimension are so good that I can sleep on top of the car without problems. And that was so easy. And I was dreaming about this project so for so many years. This was the first prototype. So I was considering as well to add something that looks nicer with a laser cutter and make something that keep like the design of the car with the design of the roof rack. But I think it's gonna be so uh, attractive for policemen. So I just want to keep it so simple. So no police will stop me. <laughs> I know it's all legal. It's inside the dimension of the car. Uh, it holds the, the weight as the original uh, roof rack uh, supports. So nothing is illegal with this project, but I want to keep it as simple as possible. And that's it.
so you can see that all the car is moving and it's so sturdy. Well, that's amazing. So I hope you enjoyed the project. At this point, I leave you here. My two previous projects, check them out and see you next week with another do-it-yourself tutorial. Ciao, ciao. Thank you.